Hello, I'm Chris Gibbons, and I'm the lead front-end engineer on the design system team in Co-op. Today, I'm going to spend the next five minutes or so talking to you about how we're building in accessibility and standards into the foundations of our design system. But first, let's have a quick history lesson. Co-op's design system, much like any other design system in any other company, started off life side of desk. There was no dedicated team around it, and contribution was firmly in that of the community. The mission statement for the design system at Co-op is to help us create a cost-efficient and coherent user experience for everybody, whether you're a colleague or a customer. The emphasis is definitely on coherency and not consistency. Ultimately, we want our products to feel the same as opposed to looking the same. Last year, we had a great year with the design system. We put in place a variety of global design libraries, mainly for designers, but also for all engineers. We released 12 brand new components into the design system, and we updated 14 existing components. And in total, we now have 42. And that's great. But the messaging that we're constantly getting from our colleagues is that around the idea of trust and trust within the design system. We're hearing that people want to trust that the design system is up to date, that it meets and continues to meet high standards, and that ultimately that it is helping them to use the right thing and also to do the right thing. So to help this, we put in place a Pali dashboard. The Pali dashboard enables all of our products and all of our colleagues to quickly, at a glance, see which ones have got the most errors, which ones have got warnings, which ones have got notifications. And that's helping them empower, empower them to go in and fix problems. We're looking <clears throat> within the front end community at building out a suite of documentation, which will enable and again, empower other engineers or designers to look at the standards that we're advocating other engineers to use. More recently, we've started to introduce Storybook into our design system, and we're slowly porting over our components into Storybook. This gives us accessibility add-ons, which enable us to have accessibility testing built into the, into the pipeline. And also it gives us visual regression testing and a load of other really, really nice additions for the developer experience. And it was around these conversations within the team and within the wider communities about how we can best start to develop our own accessibility framework. Now, here we can see a very, very early iteration of the testing framework. And at first glance, it's very busy. There's a lot going on. However, if you, if you look at it, you can quickly get a lot of information and a lot of insight from it. The green cells show where the components are passing. The red cells show where the components are failing. Yellow shows where the test criteria isn't applicable. And the blue show where more information is needed, either from design, from development, or from product. The columns give us the testing criteria, and the rows give us which component is being tested. The quick summary of the spreadsheet shows that of the 38 components tested and of the 548 tests performed, there was a 96% pass rate. <clears throat> and the framework allows us very quickly to see which tests were failing on which components. However, the one thing that we quickly realized was this accessibility testing framework didn't provide us with a one size fits all approach. And by that, I mean the age old argument of components versus user journeys. The component element testing was perfect. It allowed us to, to, to test in all of the individual components and quickly see where there was passes and where there was failures. Where the framework fell down was when these components started to get pieced together into products and actual user journeys. We quickly iterated. We tried a few different platforms. We went through Word, we tried Trello, finally settling on a nice, simple Miro board. 
This Miro board allowed us to be more explicit with the information that we were trying to convey. And it also allowed us to share it to other teams to give them the power back for testing. So how does this help us as a, as a design system team? First off, this framework provides us with the ability to start creating consistency between teams. And this is super important because it gives us as a design system team confidence. The framework also provides teams with a baseline. And a baseline is super important because again, it gives them a better indication as to what our expectations as a design system team are. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, it also begins to set the expectations of anybody who wishes to contribute back into the design system team. The contribution could take the form of a new component or a fix to an existing component. But no matter how big or how small the, the change or the con contribution is, we know as a team that the test that the new code will have gone through is the same that any one of the design system team would have gone through themselves. And this enables us to send such a positive message back into the business and within the wider communities. It's amazing.